Greetings to all in the name of Christ. What a better way to start the new year than to worship in the presence of God and the brothers and sisters in Christ. And we'll begin uh, the first hymn of the new year will be, O oh God, our help in ages past. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. You turn men back to dust, saying, Return to dust, O sons of men. You sweep men away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. Though in the morning it springs up new, by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. The length of our days is 70 years, or 80 if we have the strength. Yet there stands but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and then we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. Because the number of our days arise, that we may gain a part of wisdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared. We have seen it and testified to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life. Which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. We have fellowship with him. 
in the darkness, we lie not by the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word has no place in our lives. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin, but if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the world. Lord, we confess all of our sins to you and throw ourselves upon your mercy. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Our first reading for today is from Isaiah 40, 27 to 31. The Lord does not grow faint. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. 
They shall walk and not be faint. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading for today is from 2 Corinthians 5, 16 to 21. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All of this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of our Lord. Please stand for the gospel. Our gospel reading for today is from Matthew 9, 14 to 17. The disciples of John came to him saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days are, will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch tears away from the garment, and a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine put into new old wineskins. If it is, the skin bursts, and the wine is spilled, and the skins are destroyed. But new wine is put into fresh wineskins, and so both are preserved." This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Will the children please come forward? Good morning and Happy New Year to all of you. Which do you think is better, new or old? All right, so let's say that it's time for breakfast. Do you want some new oatmeal or some old oatmeal? Yeah. I don't want either. <laughs> I'm not a big oatmeal fan, okay. So let's say that you're going out into the dark and you need to take a flashlight to see where you're going. Do you want to take new batteries or old batteries? Yeah. Why do you want to take new batteries? Because brighter and last longer. Brighter and last longer. So new batteries are definitely better than old. Okay. All right, thank you. So how many of you would rather have new clothes than old clothes? You want new clothes? Raise your hand if you want new clothes. Okay. Now, let's say that you're looking for a painting to hang up in your house. Would it be better to have a new painting or an old painting? So raise your hand if you think new. Raise your hand if you think old. All right, we're beginning to see a little difference here. Okay, does anybody here ever play baseball? All right, so if you're playing baseball, and you're out in the field, what do you put on your hand? This hand if you're a righty, this hand if you're a lefty. You put a, a fielder's glove, right? Okay. So which is better for a fielder's glove, new or old? Probably old is better because if it's new, it's going to be real stiff. It's going to be hard to catch the ball. In fact, when you get a new fielder's glove, 
you have to do stuff to it to make it old. You probably soak it in oil and you stick an old ball in there and then you tie it up and you leave it like that so it turns a new fielder's glove into an old one. Sometimes old things are better than new things. All right, so you got up this morning and it was a brand new what? Year. Every day that you get up is a brand new day, but today you got up and it was a brand new year. So what is special about having a new year? Is it going to be better than the old year? You hope, okay. Probably all of us feel that way. We hope that the new year is going to be better than the old year. So how old were you last year? How old are you today? So it's the same thing for you, right? But this year you will turn 10. So is it better to be 10 or 9? You think it's better to be 10. Okay, so, and then is it better to be 10 than 11? And 14 or 15? 15 is better? 18 is better than 17? At what point do you get to the point where getting older starts to become not as good? What do you think? Pick a day. Pick a year. How old? Huh? Your birthday, okay. So it's better to get older until you get so far, and then do you think it's probably better to be younger? Somebody take a guess. What do you think? Yeah? Take a guess. Anybody? How about anybody out there? 50? For me, it was all downhill after 35. So you get older, but then you get to a point where older is better because you get slower and you don't think as well and you don't see as well and you don't hear as well and all these other things, right? Okay. But there is one thing, not just on New Year's Day, but there is one thing every day when you wake up in the morning that is new brand new, and the best thing you could possibly have. Because God says that his mercy is new every morning. Like you got a new sibling. A new sibling? That would be a good thing, right? Okay. But God's mercy is new every morning. Every day when you wake up, you can thank God for his mercy. You know what that means? It means he loves you. And he takes away all of your sins, and he promises to be with you every day. His mercy is new. So on this New Year's Day, I want you to celebrate God's mercy, which is new, not only today, but every day. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> Alone, who took on flesh, fullness.
voice of God in helpless pain, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God. death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he Commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Is the power of Christ I stand? Thank you. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Neither is new wine put into old wineskins. If it is, the skins burst and the wine is spilled and the skins are destroyed. We are gathered here on the first day of a new year, a clean slate, a fresh start. If you're an optimist, you think things will be better this year. You will be better this year. If you're a pessimist, you think things will be worse this year. You will be worse this year. If you're a realist, well, then I don't really know how things will be this year. We'll just have to wait and see, won't we? It certainly is a fresh start for the Purdue football team. A brand new coach is coming in. We're only months away from the start of a new baseball season. Every team starts with the same record and entertains hope of having a successful season. If you're a college student, you're ready for a brand new semester. What types of things are we thinking about when we consider that we have a fresh start. Are we thinking of a year of better health? A more successful year financially? A year with better relationships? A year in which we better ourselves and become more like the people that we want to be? Well, if you're like me, you feel a little like the old garment or the old wineskin. And there's some fear of tearing or bursting if too much change is attempted. A man's got to know his limitations. I've accepted that my best days as an athlete are behind me, well behind me. 
I'm a passable musician, but I'll never be great at any instrument. My useful baritone is now just hanging on by a thread. My patience, like my hair, has worn a little thin. It's sad to use it up with your children. And yet, still, the promise of a fresh start is there for me. It's there for all of us. The human race could certainly use a fresh start, couldn't it? Another one, that is. In the beginning, everything was fresh and new and holy. But our ancestors ruined it by grasping for equality with God. God gave them a fresh start, albeit in a fallen world, with the promise of sending a savior from sin one day. Excuse me. <clears throat> Didn't take long for things to go sideways as Cain lifted up his hand and slew his brother Abel. Am I my brother's keeper? And things got so bad that we read in Genesis 5, please read. So another fresh start as the world was cleansed by the waters of the great flood. And what's the first thing Noah did after leaving the ark? Well, he got drunk. God commanded the people to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Instead, they decided to build a tower and reach for the heavens once again. God gave them a fresh start when language was confused and then the people scattered to fill the earth. God gave Abram a fresh start when he called him into the covenant of promise. We read in Genesis 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And him who dishonors you I will curse. And all the of the earth shall be blessed. God blessed the children of Abraham and provided for them in Egypt through Joseph. So they became a mighty people. But then, now there arose This new Pharaoh made their lives bitter as he enslaved the people of God. Then the Lord, through Moses, gave them another fresh start. He brought them out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and great wonders. He called Moses to the mountain to give him the laws whereby his people could live according to God's will and be blessed. So they quickly became impatient and built an idol, a golden calf. And they grumbled and they whined, so that they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Then God gave them another fresh start as Joshua led them to take possession of the promised land. He provided prophets to make his will known to his people, but they demanded kings, and that went badly. Eventually they were conquered and carried away into captivity. Then, through Ezra and Nehemiah, God gave them another fresh start and brought them back to the promised land. But then, when the time was right, he sent forth his son, born of a woman born under the law to redeem those who were under the curse of the law. This son of God lived the perfect life that we could not and then offered it freely as a gift to pay for the sins of the entire human race. He then rose from the dead victorious over sin, death, and the devil. That was the ultimate fresh start. Through faith in Jesus, we are made new creations. We are reconciled with our creator. We can live lives that are pleasing to God. We can be better as we walk with the Lord, our eyes firmly fixed on Jesus, our Savior. Now, those who don't know the Lord Jesus think the salvation of the human race lies in education or technology. It is believed that we are destroying the planet, and the planet needs to be saved from us. 
It is believed that people should be able to do what they want, when they want, no matter what that is. It is believed that people can define who or what they are regardless of their DNA. It is believed that people who follow the Lord or believe in God's word are preventing the human race from having the fresh start that is needed. Now, you may have missed the big scientific news that broke last month. An experiment conducted December the 5th produced 3.15 megajoules of fusion energy compared with the 2.05 megajoules of energy used to trigger the reaction. This is the first time a fusion reaction was contained and produced more energy than was put into it. Fusion energy, the energy that fuels our sun, is the holy grail of energy. It is limitless with no negative byproducts. And people were just elated that this could provide the fresh start for the human race that is so desperately needed as limitless energy could be applied to the ills of all mankind. The article did throw a little cold water on the enthusiasm by indicating that the first power plant is still likely decades away. And, of course, we can be sure that a new energy won't cause any problems with those who are now providing the energy to the world. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe that will create a problem. You see, here's the problem. With any kind of fresh start, it's always in the hands of sinful people in a fallen world. When we first discovered that we could split atoms, creating untold energy in the process, first thing we did was build a bomb. Is there any chance that the first practical application of fusion energy will be to produce laser weapons of mass destruction? The only fresh start that we should be thinking about is already available to us today. We don't have to wait for decades for it to come around. We came here and we confessed our sins before God and one another, and he said that they were wiped clean. We admitted our mistakes, our errors, our selfishness of the past, and though we were red like crimson, now we are white as snow. Don't put your hope in the power of the sun curing all the ills of the world. Put your trust in the power of the Son of God who can make us all new by grace through faith. When we are powered by the Son of God, then we can be new. Here is a story about a man who made a new start in his life based on one evening's experience. It's called the taxi ride. Twenty years ago, I drove a cab for a living. One time, I arrived in the middle of the night to pick up at a building that was dark, except for a single light in a ground floor window. Under these circumstances, many drivers would honk once or twice, wait a minute, and then drive away. But I had seen too many uh, impoverished people who depended on taxis as their only means of transportation. And so unless a situation smelled of danger, I always went to the door. This passenger might be someone who needs my assistance, I reasoned to myself. So I walked to the door and I knocked. Just a minute answered a frail, elderly voice. I could hear something being dragged across the floor. After a long pause, the door opened. A small woman in her 80s stood before me. She was wearing a print dress and a pillbox hat with a veil pinned on it like someone out of a 1940s movie. And by her side was a small nylon suitcase. The apartment looked as if no one had lived in it for years. All the furniture was covered with sheets. There were no clocks on the walls, no knickknacks, no utensils on the counters. In the corner was a cardboard box filled with photos and glassware. Would you like me to carry your bag out to the car, she said. I took the suitcase to the cab and then returned to assess, assist the woman. She took my arm and we walked slowly toward the curb. She kept thanking me for my kindness. It's nothing, I told her. I just try to treat my passengers the way I would want my mother to be treated. 
such a good boy, she said. When we got in the cab, she gave me an address and then asked, could you drive through downtown? It's not the shortest way, I answered quickly. Oh, I don't mind, she said. I'm in no hurry. I'm on my way to hospice. I looked in the rearview mirror, and her eyes were glistening. I don't have any family left, she continued. The doctor says I don't have very long. So I quietly reached over, and I shut off the meter. What route would you like me to take, I asked. And for the next few hours, we drove through the city. She showed me the building where she had worked as an elevator operator. We drove through the neighborhood where she and her husband had lived when they were newlyweds. She had me pull in front of a furniture warehouse that once had been a ballroom where she had gone dancing as a girl. Sometimes she asked me to slow in front of a particular building or corner and would just sit and stare into the darkness saying nothing. As the first hint of sun was coming over the horizon, she suddenly said, I'm tired. Let's go now. We drove in silence to the address she had given me. It was a low building, <clears throat> like a small convalescent home, with a driveway that passed under a portico. Two orderlies came out to the cab as soon as we pulled up. They were solicitous and intent, watching her every move. They were expecting her. I opened the trunk and took the small suitcase to the door. The woman was already seated in a wheelchair. How much do I owe you, she asked, reaching for her purse. Nothing, I said. Well, you have to make a living, she answered. There are other passengers. Almost without thinking, I bent and I gave her a hug, and she held on to me tightly. You gave an old woman a moment of joy, she said. Thank you. I squeezed her hand, and then I walked into the dim morning light. Behind me, a door shut. It was the sound of the closing of a life. I didn't pick up any more passengers that shift. I drove aimlessly, lost in thought. For the rest of the day, I could hardly talk. What if that woman had gotten an angry driver, or one who had been impatient? What if I had refused to take the run, or had hawked, hawked once and then driven away? On quick review, I don't think I have ever done anything more important in my life. We're conditioned to think that our lives revolve around great moments. But great moments may catch us unaware, beautifully wrapped in what others may call a small one. The end of that woman's life here on earth provides provide a fresh start for the man who was able to step outside of his own concerns and provide a moment of joy for someone else. That's the way that God wants us to live. That's the fresh start that he wants us to have. He wants us to live every day in his mercy, not just for ourselves, but to spread the love of God to others. Now, God doesn't need our good works, but other people do. And we who have been made new creations in Christ can resolve today and every day to live not only for ourselves, but to love others as God has loved us. That's the kind of fresh start that God wants us to have. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can celebrate the new year today in your presence, lifting up our hearts and our voices to you in praise and being strengthened by the proclaiming of your word.
We pray that your light would shine into the darkness, not only of this world, but of our own lives. That we would daily humble ourselves in your presence and receive the mercy that is new each morning. That we might live each day for you and for others. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our brothers and sisters who are suffering from bad health. We think of those who are suffering from cancer. Sue, Arla, Robin, Linda, Steve, Dan, Helen, Lori, Roxy, Casey, Rachel, Troy, Chuck, and Dana. Please grant them your healing. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for continued strength and recovery for Bob and Eleanor, for Sue, Terry, Lois, Nick, Dave, Katrina, Lisa, Diana, Joan, Mary, Al, Debbie, Bill, Christine, and Ron. Lord, in your mercy, we pray that you would be with Judy, who is still waiting to meet with her uh, oncologist. We pray that you would grant her patience and a good opportunity for her cancer to be brought into remission. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who grieve, especially Eileen, as she mourns the loss of her grandson, Corey. Lord, in your mercy, continue to be with Sid and others who are hospitalized. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who are traveling over the holiday seasons. We pray that you would keep them safe and return them home. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all who are spreading the good news of Jesus the Savior and providing an opportunity for a new start and for people to be made new in Christ by living and serving as missionaries. We thank you, O Lord, that you have called them to the ends of the earth to proclaim the good news of Jesus. And we pray your blessing on all of them, especially Luke and Ruth and the Seabolts. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all who are suffering with illnesses this season especially Mark and Stephen. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all of those who are battling RSV, especially the little ones and the elderly. Grant your healing. Lord, in your mercy, we pray safety and good health for all expectant mothers and their unborn children. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, as we come to a new year, we often face it with optimism that often quickly turns to pessimism. Help us to realize that if we put our trust in you and not in ourselves, not in our world, not in our governments, but put our trust in you, nothing will ever be able to separate us from your love in Christ. Nothing will ever be able to take away that which is most precious, and that is your mercy your forgiveness, the eternal life that we receive by a gift of grace through faith in Jesus. It's in his name that we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <clears throat> The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. A sign shall be given, a virgin will conceive, a human baby bearing a diminished deity. The glory of the nations, a light for all to see, and hope for all who will embrace. Is 
If anyone has an announcement to make, please make your way up to the front. Do we have any guests to be introduced? How about in the back there? Caleb, you want to introduce your guests? Can I hear you? I heard you. Okay. It's great to have you guys. Happy New Year to all of you. So you got a big house full next door? He didn't hear me. That's a, a voice hanging on by a thread. All right. Uh, any other guests with us today? That's probably about it. Carissa, you have an announcement? In one week from today, we'll have our children's program during the service. Um, if the children could be here at 9:10 for uh, costuming down in the uh, Sunday school hallway, and then following, we'll have our brunch. Um, if you've signed up to bring something, please remember to bring that. And then um, if you want to bring extra, feel free to do that. And we definitely could use help um, after service cleaning up. Thank you. That's next week. Caleb, you have an announcement? And before I forget, we need four strong people to come up when we're done here to lift this down so that we can move it out of the way for next week. On uh, January 14th, uh, we will uh, be having our uh, men's Bible study uh, meet at uh, Gray House Coffee at uh, 10 a.m. Uh, right now we're going through the book of Genesis, so um, if you're uh, interested in uh, coming to that, uh, please do. Um, there's always good coffee and tea there, so uh, feel free to come. That might take a while. You're doing the whole book of Genesis? Not all one day. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I took a class at seminary in Genesis and Hebrew, and we got into the second chapter. There was a long way to go. Any, yes, Skip. 
Is it really? 39? Is that a laugh or a cough? Okay, all right. John? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Donna. Happy birthday to you. God's blessings to you. God's blessings to you. God's blessings, dear Donna. God's blessings to you. Congratulations. Your dad, I'm sure, was always happy that you were a tax baby <laughs> and probably pointed that out to you, right? Uh, are there any other announcements that we need to make today? Uh, look for, don't forget four strong people to set this down here, and I would appreciate that. Thank you.